In today's video, a top AEW star on their way to WWE, yet another COVID outbreak in WWE, and a WWE star already getting buried following their heel turn. Support WrestleTalk! Give us a subscribe. Smash that subscribe button for daily wrestling news videos, and to support WrestleTalk to go straight to eight. 100,000 subscribers. One year into the Dynamite era on TV, AEW have gone from strength to strength, consistently beating NXT in the ratings head-to-head -head on Wednesday nights, putting on some of the best matches of the year, and effectively debuting a number of new stars like Eddie Kingston. It's all amazing in all elite wrestling. Unless you've got a vagina. While nearly every singles or tag dude wrestler has a storyline or faction on the show, the women's division has frequently been an afterthought, with nobody getting any feuds on the same level as the men, and pay-per-view title matches being thrown together last minute. One excuse for this is that a lot of AEW's Japanese female talent, like former women's champion Rio, have been unable to work in the US during the pandemic, and that top division stars like Chris Statlander are out injured until next year. But that's no excuse for one of the best lady wrestlers they've been using for the last several months to possibly now be on their way to WWE. Last night, Thunder Rosa lost her NWA Women's Championship to Serena Deeb. Rosa just lost her AEW Women's Champion Shida in a very well-received match at last month's All Out pay-per-view, and the feud appeared to be building to a rematch, this time for Rosa's NWA belt. But despite them beating Kimberly and defeating Diamante and Ivelisse while tagging with Shida on Dynamite, Thunder Rosa disappeared from AEW. Rosa then told WrestleTalk's Denise Salcedo she was sitting by the phone waiting for them to call, but she hasn't heard anything. And possibly, during that time, WWE might have given her a ring instead. Dave Meltzer has reported both AEW and WWE are very interested in Rosa, but Rosa now dropping the NWA title, who has a working relationship with AEW, Tony Khan has even announced new champion Deeb is defending it against Leela Hirsch tonight, implies WWE have signed her instead, as they would require her to stop working independent dates. The excuse of AEW AEW not having enough female talent to use appears unfortunately very hollow. Rosa isn't the first signing to slip through their fingers. Both Jordan Grace and Diona Perrazzo chose Impact Wrestling. Tessa Blanchard is still a free agent, although she comes with her own baggage. And it's also being reported WWE have snapped up another top star, with Tokyo Sports revealing Miko Satomura has been signed to NXT UK to work as a player coach, i.e. being both an on-air wrestler and a behind-the-scenes trainer. Satamora had previously reached the semi-finals in the 2018 May Young Classic tournament, and she's expected to travel to England in November for the next set of NXT UK TV tapings at BT Sport. Before we get on with the rest of the news, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to this video's sponsor, M-A-N-S-C-A-P-E-D. Manscaped. Best brand dedicated to all-in-one male grooming to make you look like me, Ollie Mella. I'm a huge fan of Manscaped. I even shaved my legs with their patented lawnmower 2.0 when I was really bored two weeks ago. And now they've taken my grooming routine to a whole new ball game testicle pun. Because it's not just about the shave, you've also got to take care down there in between and after trimming too. And as always, Manscaped has your back sack and crack as they've just brought out their new crop care kit this contains the crop preserver ball deodorant the crop reviver ball toner the crop cleanser hair and body wash and the crop mop single package hygiene wipes in one handy on the go kit i use the crop preserver after i shower every night and my big hairy balls stay fresh for a whole 24 hours thanks manscaped so sign up for the peak hygiene plan today to get your own custom grooming plan delivered right to your door hassle free and make sure to do that using our manscaped.com forward slash WTTV link below because that'll also give you 20% off free shipping and the free foot duster foot deodorizing spray. Your balls. Well, thank you. It's not just signing the best female talent from under AEW's nose that NXT has going for it. They also have Halloween Havoc's Spin the Wheel Make a Deal. Unfortunately, 
the wheel landed on another COVID outbreak. Why was that even an option? A wrestling observer is reporting the WWE Performance Center in Orlando, Florida had another outbreak of COVID-19 last Friday. And as per company precautions, anyone who was at the facility, whether they tested positive or negative, now have to quarantine for two weeks. Dave Meltzer adds that none of NXT's top stars tested positive, but the quarantine measures will take out several people scheduled for tonight's Halloween Havoc special and aspects of the show are going to have to be changed. This is the fourth reported outbreak of coronavirus at WWE venues and comes just one week after local officials instructed a strike team to investigate the Performance Center, Full Sail University and the site of the Thunderdome, the Amway Center, for possibly not adhering to safety guidelines. The Performance Center, recently rebranded as the Capital Wrestling Center, has been admitting select group of fans in plexiglass pods who have to undergo testing procedures since TakeOver 31 earlier this month. When news of their venues being under investigation first broke, WWE issued the statement, WWE is not open to the public, but rather operating on a closed set with only essential personnel in attendance. And of their 10,000 PCR tests to WWE performers, employees, production staff and crew, resulting in only 1.5% positive cases as compared to the current national average of more than 5%, which, as Brian Alvarez pointed out, is still 150 positive cases, far more than originally reported, and a number that doesn't include the families affected when the positive cases return home. Coincidentally, on this same day, DXT head producer Road Dog announced he's quitting Twitter after arguing masks weren't effective to prevent spreading COVID against former WWE agent Shane Helms. It's unknown how the latest this decision will affect WWE's plans to move out of the Thunderdome and start touring again with fans in attendance. Dave Meltzer has noted WWE's deal with the Amway Center is up next month, and the NBA are scheduled to start playing there for its next season. But with everything so up in the air, no concrete plans are being made. What is definitely a good move in hindsight though, given that one of WWE's outbreaks came when NXT talent crossed over into the Thunderdome to be retribution extras, is that there are no plans to include NXT in this year's Survivor Series pay-per-view. WWE already announced on Monday the major matches were all Raw vs SmackDown, Champion vs Champion belts. Because it's the one night a year when Raw and SmackDown stars go head to head in direct competition. Apart from Raw's Street Profits vs SmackDown's Cesaro and Nakamura match, and Raw's Braun Strowman vs SmackDown's Roman Reigns the other Friday, and Raw's Miz vs SmackDown's Otis at Hell in a Cell just this past Sunday. What? Are the rules what are the rules? I don't know, and I doubt WWE do either, because Tucker, who turned heel on SmackDown's Otis, is still listed as a SmackDown wrestler, but was definitely drafted to Raw, and is getting buried on main event. Thanks for your support on Patreon, the Snapdragon King Ryodonte. Tucker turned heel on his heavy machinery tag partner Otis on Sunday night, losing him his Money in the Bank briefcase. It was problematic for many reasons. Tucker was just drafted to Raw, Otis is still on SmackDown, and The Miz now has a Money in the Bank title shot in 2020. But reports started to emerge yesterday that Tucker had been quietly moved back to SmackDown to continue his feud with Otis, because Survivor Series is the one time a year for Raw and SmackDown stars to go head to head. But PW Insider is reporting WWE.com's roster page is simply out of date, and Tucker is most definitely a Raw star. This presumably sets up a Raw vs SmackDown match for Survivor Series with Tucker vs Otis, but Tucker's new serious character following his heel turn isn't off to a good start, because likely revealing what WWE management actually think of his future chances, he was beaten by Umberto Carrillo at the main event tapings before this week's Raw. Beaten by Umberto Carrillo on main event. Vince High on Tucker backstage reports incoming. Let's have a look at the other stars who get regularly beaten on main event. Grand Metalik, Ricochet, Drew Gulak, Akira Tozawa, Mustafa Ali, and Umberto Carrillo. It could be worse, Tucker. You could. 
be in Retribution. On Monday's Raw, the Hurt Business effectively squashed Retribution in an eight-man tag elimination match. But Retribution did get the first pin, rolling up MVP when he was distracted by Mia Yim's reckoning character having some kind of fake seizure in the ring. For it all to be revealed as a dastardly trick. It was an angle that wasn't just lame, it was one many also found rather insulting and offensive, seemingly cheaply exploiting a serious medical issue. Reckoning herself has replied to this criticism on Twitter. Not a seizure, not an epileptic, a possession. To clarify, I would never fake a medical condition like those. An apparent break of kayfabe that was immediately undermined by her follow-up tweet, it worked, with a gif of Rihanna enjoying some popcorn. Retribution's criteria for worked there being got decisively beaten. Which, which figures? What did you make of Retribution's not a seizure angle? Let me know in the comments down below. Personally, I don't think Reckoning's argument holds up as supernatural possession has never been part of Retribution's anti-establishment gimmick. To end on some good news, new New Japan president Takami Abari has told Tokyo Sports their biggest show of the year, Wrestle Kingdom, will once again take place over two consecutive nights on January 4th and 5th, which circumstance Permitting is set to have the largest live audience for a wrestling show since the pandemic began at 20 thousand fans. The Tokyo Dome has a capacity of 50,000, but that is of course limited due to social distancing measures. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that subscribe and thumbs up buttons to get daily wrestling news videos. And check out our board game channel with Adam Blompier and his fascinating new video on how 200,000 allied prisoners in World War II use Monopoly to bust out of their camps. Click the video on the right for that. And check out Alexa Bliss's new look she debuted in my review of the post Helena Cell Raw by clicking the video down there. I've been Mr. Davis. Remember to check out Manscaped using our links below. Jam that jam.